Thanks for letting me share in this uh, inspiring Sunday afternoon. Um, it was a Sunday afternoon a little over 10 years ago in the middle of June of 2002 that I found myself in a field in the middle of Tennessee with about 70,000 other people. And um, we were experiencing what was shaping up to be one of the most successful rock festivals ever launched in the United States of America. It was a festival that I'd helped to conceive and to produce and to promote. And all around me, there was this atmosphere that could only be described as joyful celebration. It seemed like everyone was happy. Later that evening, my partners and I walked onto the main stage before the final performance of the weekend. And we looked out at what seemed to be an endless sea of people. And we told them and ourselves that we would be back next year, same time, same place, and there was an extraordinary roar, an indescribable roar of approval. I think it's the uh, first and last time that I ever really felt like a rock star. <laughs> Here's what had happened. A couple of independent but resourceful promoters, more or less flying under the radar screen in the southeastern United States, had put together a team and launched a festival in the middle of a field in rural Tennessee. And we had sold out every single ticket for that festival weeks in advance, something that was really unheard of for festivals 10 or 11 years ago. And we had done so without spending a penny in advertising. And we didn't have a single band on the bill that you were likely to hear on the radio. And fans came to this festival. They had an amazing weekend. And they left, committed to returning the following year, which they did and they've come back year after year for the past 11 years. It's very difficult for me to convey to someone outside the industry just what a shock this was to the music industry at the time. It was coming totally out of left field. It defied all conventional wisdom. This was a time of consolidation in the live music industry. We were, um, there was a lot of Wall Street money out there and the word on the street that independent promoters like us, our, our days were numbered. We, need to, we needed to be actually looking for other jobs. As for rock festivals, well, they had left behind disgruntled communities, bruised and battered promoters, shell-shocked staff, and often angry and unhappy fans. There wasn't really seen to be much of a future in rock festivals in the United States of America, at least. And I think um, if there were any doubts about that, the madness and mayhem of Woodstock 99 had uh, put that to rest. But somehow this was different, very, very different. Don't get me wrong, things were far from perfect. They weren't even close. And in fact, uh, on the first day of that weekend, we had traffic backed up 20 miles in each direction on Interstate 24. It was going towards Chattanooga and towards Nashville. And the reports were that fans were spending eight and nine hours, sometimes 12 hours or more in traffic just to get in. I remember approaching one of the um, highway patrolmen who had been part of the many meetings leading up to that weekend. And I asked him, how is it out there? And he looked at me and said, man, it is a mess. But then he smiled and said, next year we'll get it right. I'd scarcely conceived of next year, but in fact, the planning had already begun. That was the spirit that was all around me. Nothing was perfect. More than a few things were quite a mess. But the spirit was, next year we'll get it right. We had embarked on a journey. We were all in this together, and people were smiling. The idea that I want to share with you today is that the success, even behind something as wild and crazy as a rock and roll music festival like Bonnaroo is actually rooted in some traditional fundamental values. And these are the same values that support and sustain the communities that we live in. I use the word community because I think it's truly the best word to describe the heart and soul of the Bonnaroo experience and also the key to its success. And by community, I mean people coming together living together, sharing hopes, dreams, aspirations, 
looking for ways to work together to achieve those hopes, dreams, and aspirations, investing in the future, making commitments not to short-term gain, but to long-term success, to helping one another. I think it's the qualities that lead the three communities that make Bonnaroo possible, the community of fans, the community of music industry professionals, and the community of Manchester, Coffee County, and the surrounding region in the state of Tennessee. The qualities that lead those organizations to work together successfully are the same qualities that lead to almost all long-term business success, to general prosperity, and to happy, healthy, creative, vibrant communities. I might also add that I think the thread of music around which these communities are joined is a very, very important part of this equation, and we'll come back to that a bit later. In the early 1990s, I had started to expand my concert promoting business, and I was going into what were called underserved markets. Uh, these were towns where mostly shows weren't coming anymore. They were being overlooked by not only the major touring acts, but almost all touring acts. At the same time, there was a new generation of bands emerging who didn't even expect to have their music played on the radio. They weren't signed to major record deals, at least not at first. And they, um, you know, they often made their own records, but they didn't really sell very many of them in most instances. But they loved to play, and audiences loved to hear them. And they toured and played and built their audiences one show at a time in cities throughout the United States. They made deep contact with their most passionate and devoted fans, and those, band, those fans spread the word about the music that they loved. And in 1997 and 1998, when the internet started to become a part of our lives, these bands and fans started to, to embrace the new technology in really exciting ways. They started talking to one another through various online discussion groups. The bands, of course, formed websites and internet fan bases. They communicated with one another. A community emerged, and it was a community no longer linked simply to geographical space, but it was linked by a communication network that literally spanned the globe. This was the community that formed the foundation of Bonnaroo, this community of bands and fans. We asked the artists that we had agreed to play the first year festival to reach out to those fans through their internet fan clubs and other means and give those fans the opportunity to buy a specially priced ticket before they went on sale to the general public. We had hoped to sell maybe 6,000 tickets in a couple of weeks. We sold 9,000 the first day. After two days, I think we were at 13,000. At the end of eight days, we had to stop ticket sales at 60,000 because we hadn't, plan we hadn't finished our planning. We didn't really even know how many people we could accommodate on the site. So we were like, whoa, let's, let's hold off a minute and uh, we took the time to dot our I's and cross our T's. And about four weeks later, we sold 10,000 more tickets in about an hour. There was no one more amazed about this than we were ourselves. Uh, 70,000 tickets sold through the internet alone, through our website, in fact. Absolutely no advertising. And this was back in 2002. There was still no Facebook. There was no Twitter. Uh, the internet and the use of the internet for marketing was uh, still very much in its infancy. We were blown away. The world had changed. We had reached out to a community and they had said, we like this idea. And man, we had our work cut out for us now. The city of Manchester was home to about 10,000 people. Coffee County, 45,000 people. We were bringing 70,000 people in to create the sixth largest city in Tennessee for a single weekend. <laughs> and these people were camping on 700 acres of land with um, no real infrastructure, no running water, no power, really almost no roads. 
we had to bring everything in and actually build a city to support this community of 70,000 people. Now, in my opinion, the, um, it's the camping experience at Bonnaroo that really sets it apart from other festivals. It really forms that bond of community. And it does something else. I think it, um, it really takes the festival goer and transforms them from a passive spectator into an active participant in the experience. They're part of creating, sustaining, and defining what that experience is. And that experience has evolved as all healthy communities evolve over the years. I'll tell you a little bit about what it's like now. We have some 12 or 13 stages. There's a comedy tent where some of the most famous comedians in the world will perform during the weekend. We have a cinema tent where sometimes directors come and talk about their films. We, show, um, we commission artists to create works for the site and we engage them to create collaborative works in the community centers that are out in the campgrounds that we've established. We have a daily newspaper. We have Radio Bonnaroo, where we take over a local radio station and broadcast as the fans are arriving on site and throughout the weekend. We have great restaurants with delicious food. And these days, of course, what else? A food court truck. I mean, a food truck court. We have a general store, a post office, all sorts of shops where craftsmen and artisans can display their wares and sell them. We register people to vote. We offer educational programs. We have an organic garden. We compost. There's yoga practice each morning. We have a Ferris wheel, a crazy cuckoo clock that overlooks the town center, which we call Centeroo. We have a staff of 5,000 people and we have 3,000 volunteers on site. We have community organizations that support our staff by providing various labor throughout the weekend and raising money for their causes. Over a period of some 10 years, they've raised over $2 million to support the educational programs, the sports programs, the arts programs in the community that they're a part of. We also do fundraising of all sorts to support causes that are important to us. Most of those causes rooted in the local community, sometimes beyond. We had the opportunity to buy new band uniforms for the Coffee County High School Band. Their uniforms were 30 years old and literally falling off of them as they marched. We were able to support the Coffee County Community Center and build a skateboard park and we support the Arts Center and many other projects as they come onto our radar screen. There are many, many, many challenges to Bonnaroo. And I think we'll talk about one right now. Let's just get nitty gritty and talk trash. As you can imagine, 80,000 people camping for four days or more on a side of some 700 acres, there's a lot of trash. It's far more than the infrastructure of Coffee County can support with its landfills. A young woman named Anna Borofsky formed a company called Clean Vibes. It was formed because she and her friends who were fans themselves were attending shows and those shows, they were disturbed by the garbage that fans were leaving behind and they decided to do something about it. And it was Clean Vibes with Anna at the helm that took on the formidable task of keeping Bonnaroo clean. Last year, they had 650 volunteers supporting them, but it was the entire community of Bonnaroo that made the remarkable results that they achieved possible. They managed to divert 238 tons of trash from the local landfills. And in doing that, they also salvaged three tons of unused food and distributed it to community organizations who in turn distributed it to needy throughout the region. It's a remarkable effort and just one of the many things that you find in almost every realm of the festival. The festival goers, the volunteers, the staff, the community, all working together. And remember that, uh, that traffic problem. Did I tell you we've got our very own exit off of the interstate? <laughs> the Tennessee Department of Transportation, the Highway Patrol, all of the community worked with us 
And yes, for that weekend only, it's only open that weekend, but you can drive right off the interstate straight onto the Bonnaroo property. And um, traffic has been uh, reduced by that and many of the other uh, methods that we've employed since. Um, you can often drive just straight in as you arrive. This all brings me back once again to community and the power of music. We know that a stronger, healthier, and prosperous community helps make us stronger and more prosperous as well. We see the evidence of that all around us. But how do you nurture these qualities? The commitment to the future, to creative problem solving, to investing in long-term success over short-term gain. Far from being mere entertainment, music is part of what I think makes us human. And it provides a vehicle for both individual as well as group expression. It's social glue. It accompanies virtual, virtually all of our social gatherings and rites of passage. It's intertwined with our memories and with our hopes and dreams for individuals as well as for our communities. The power of music runs deep. There was a study recently at Vanderbilt University that found that students in the arts develop more creative problem solving skills than other students in any discipline. They were also better at pattern recognition and tended to show greater empathy towards others. Some observers have noted that the arts instill self-discipline and patience while encouraging the development of skills. But these are qualities to be valued not only in artists, they're the qualities that we need in our community to survive and to nurture and to sustain the growth of our hopes and dreams. Bonnaroo may be a wild and crazy rock and roll festival for many. It is. But it's my hope that beyond the surface, the commitments to community that have made it a success can inspire the hopes and dreams of others and the determination to bring communities together to solve our really big problems by investing in the future and committing to long-term success and not merely short-term gains. And that's my dream for us all. Thank you.